Hi, my name is Tom. My call sign's N3LLL. I'd like to take a little bit of time and wander through the modifications that I made to restore this ARC-5 receiver. This particular receiver was an AM receiver. It was actually in the original box. It had been used, but uh, very sparingly. Uh, not many modifications to it. But like many of you, I have probably five or six of these that have been sitting around one place or another over the years where I pick them up at the flea market for a nominal price but never really do anything because it's a pain in the butt to build an AC power supply. It's a, a lot of work to redo the front panel and it's a labor of love to replace all of the capacitors with uh, bored out original cans and so as I looked at that pile I decided there ought to be some things that I can do to make it a little easier. So just to give you a quick demo on this restored receiver, all the capacitors have been replaced. There's a DC to DC inverter on the back that operate, that basically provides B plus in substitution of the noisy dynamotor. The uh, filaments have been rewired to work on 12 volts. So as you see this radio, it works on a station 12 volt power supply and draws about two amps. I am in South Texas. I'm in a place called Kima, which is about 30 miles south of Houston. If you know where NASA is, I'm just on the other side of the lake on Galveston Bay near NASA. What I've got outside is a an amplified loop, broadband loop, 300 miles away. As he cries out for help. That is uh, WWL in New Orleans in the middle of the day. Not too bad. So as you as you tune this radio, and you might kind of, and we have a busy next two hours. We're gonna hear from JJ on the property. There's Lafayette, Louisiana, which is about 200 miles away. One of the interesting things about restoration of these radios is the fact that uh, they are just amazingly built. I don't know if, if many of you have looked through. It's got a full RF amplifier in it. It actually has a BFO on it, even the AM version. Um, they made these radios in several versions. They made AM. They made below AM. Many people use those for Q fibers over the years. And then they made one that went from three to six, six to nine. And I believe there was one from nine to 12, but it's very, very rare. First of all, if you look at my faceplate that I put together, I decided rather than cutting a piece of aluminum, I designed a circuit board. And this circuit board uh, basically is pre-drilled and it's got a place to solder the LED as well as the dropping resistor for the LED. It has a place for a quarter inch phone jack. I'm sorry, an eighth inch phone jack, which I, which I can supply as well as toggle switches on either side and three eighths inch for the, for the volume control. That fits right back into the frame. One of the common problems when converting an arc set is the replacement of these existing Sprague capacitors. These were pretty unique. They were in an extruded can. They had not a common screw, 348 studs on them, you know, which is kind of halfway between what we use today. We use twos and fours. The other thing is that there's a micarta top. Most of these were made with, with beeswax during the war because there was a lack of paraffin available to build electronics apparatus paraffin was needed for explosives. So one of my challenges in the past to rebuild these was to remove this cover. Of course you had to be very careful or you could take a jeweler saw, cut it out, clean them out, put the new capacitors in, epoxy it back together and then you would have something original. So I know there'll be a lot of naysayers but here's my conclusion. The only one that's going to know what's inside that radio is me once I restore it. If it's working well and it looks original on the outside, then I'm home free. Now, to say to 
you know, my other challenge was if, if I were to just solder the capacitors in, there's really no structural way to put the capacitors in the radio, and it just looks like crap. So I sat down, figured out that I could make a small circuit board. That circuit board would actually be two pieces fit together, tack soldered, and structurally it would be at a right angle, very similar to the original capacitor. When I built these boards, I made them so that they were double-sided, plated through holes, and I plated through the slots so that when the time comes to solder these little bad boys in, all you have to do is fold the original wire in and then tack solder it back in place. Structurally, it's got a good electrical circuit because you're actually using the entire side of the board. This side all goes to ground. There's two styles of cans, so the small ones and the large ones. This board replaces the large one. One of the other things that I considered when I put this back together was the ability to provide capacitors at the right form factor and right voltage that they would fit directly on the boards. And those are, those are also in my kit of parts. And then lastly, an idea of what the inverter looks like. And what I ended up doing is building a circuit board that essentially form fits over the dyna motor connections. One of the things I've found is a lot of people solder directly to those miniature banana jacks where the original dyna motor was. With a little bit of uh, solder wick, you can pull those back out and the form factor on these contacts will fit right down on it. Many times when you have a 75 year old radio, the studs that held the dyna motor were anti-vibration studs. Many of those have deteriorated and went bad. I've 3D printed some posts if you need them to replace those as well. In the case of this AM radio that I'm demonstrating today, it actually has those, those studs that are, are in good shape, so I didn't have to replace them. Lastly, and I'll show you in the pictures when I show you the radio itself, I found a small 5K to voice coil, 5K to 8 ohm transformer. Many of these radios had 160 ohms, I'm sorry, I think it's 180 ohms and 600 ohm outputs. So you ended up having to have a, another transformer to be, able to, tra to be able to modify that impedance to run a loudspeaker. So what I ended up doing is using one of these brackets in, in, without the capacitor piece, and I'm able to mount a, this 5K transformer and fit it exactly back in the space of the original transformer. So just let me reiterate, when my radios are done, essentially they run on 12 volts, they draw two amps, and they'll run a, a loudspeaker. So this last view is the modified radio. So you can see you've got the 0.1 capacitors. Uh, I found that with the inverter, a little bit larger capacitor in the uh, B plus side is uh, helpful. Uh, throughout, this is the cathode uh, bypass capacitor. In the back here, you can see a larger capacitor where a 0.22 used to be. We changed that out to a 10 mic. Makes the B plus nice and quiet. Left the original filter. Here's the new audio transformer. Fits nicely in, reconnects to the outside world. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my modification. I'll provide all of these parts for you to do the same and uh, hopefully we'll get some of these 75 year old uh, amazing radios back on the air again. Thank you.